and are only two degrees off of your head. At first, you're not very far from, are you? But the farther and farther you fly, the two degrees off, you become farther and farther from where you want to be. In life, the farther you go, the more years that pass by, the more likely you will not arrive at the place you would want to be. And your heading is wrong, it's definitely not what you want to be. Now what I'd like to talk, talk to you a little bit about today is All through scripture, Jesus, through his prophets, through his words, scripture is complete with a, um, a discussion of people that have a wrong opinion. Now, two degrees off is not very much, but out of quite a ways, it becomes very significant. You're heading in the right direction, correct? But two degrees off, way out there, means you might arrive in a different state. So I'd like to look at, at uh, a couple of instances in which the Bible talks about people that were headed just slightly in the wrong direction. And I'd like to look at um, what Paul was talking about. And if you want to turn your Bibles to Colossians, Colossians, and the second chapter. And I'll be reading some uh, various um, verses here, verses uh, 4, 8, 10, and 16, Colossians 2. Colossians 2, 4 says, And I say, lest any man should be Godly you with enticing words. So you could be heading in the right direction, and someone might be guiling you with enticing words, and you might be disagreeing with well. In verse uh, 8, it says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and see after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Beware, beware lest any man spoil you. And then in verse 10, and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. And finally in verse 16, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of the holy day or the new moon or of the Sabbath. So you are headed through life. And somehow because of someone's influence, um, somebody guides you uh, with information that is not correct. Maybe somewhat heretical, you end up going in the wrong direction uh, finally. So, what Paul is talking here uh, is about something that the Colossians uh, were dealing with. And it's a word that uh, is kind of new to me, and it might be new to you. It's called syncretism, or syncretism. It's an amalgamation of different religious thoughts um, put together, some of which may be true and some which may be false. So here we have Paul who is trying to counsel the Colossians that they have combined Jewish and Greek ideas together. Probably some of the elements were diet, um, the mediatorial function of angels, uh, 
Um, and uh, certainly circumcision. So here we have this emphasis on the things that uh, the Jews were um, part of, the, the Jews had as part of their culture. And they were insisting that Christians um, follow this kind of counsel. So reading from um, one author said, Paul takes the terminology of those that are in error to attack their teaching and develops the doctrine of the cosmic Christ. In Christ, the one mediator, not angels in various levels of mediator. In Christ, the one mediator dwells all wisdom and knowledge in his death and resurrection, all powers of the cosmos are defeated and subjected to himself. And then this I thought was particularly important. It says, any teaching which detracts from the centrality of Christ under the pretense of leading them to maturity and perfection is a perversion of the faith. The apostle thus identifies and exposes the root of the error of the philosophy. So all through the scripture, um, we are being warned about Heretical practices and theology, and um, well, you know that was that was in the scriptures. What about today? How about people that maybe don't take the Bible too literally? Oh, yeah, it couldn't mean exactly what it says, no. Or how about the idea that all will end up? Being a good person is your uh, ticket. So here in Colossae, we have a, a mixture of Judaism and some Oriental paganism all thrown together. And there's a danger in that. You will be two degrees off your destination. And you'll end up as a one place. Now, John is another person that uh, was counseling churches. And, uh, we've just been studying in uh, Thursday night about the counsel to the seven churches in Revelation. And uh, in Revelation 2 and 3, it talks about John's message to Pergamus. Um, in chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 particularly, he warns about the doctrine of Balaam, and also about the Nicolaitans. Uh, the doctrine of ba Balaam uh, was a fornication of uh, Jewish men and Moabitess women, uh, non-Jewish women, uh, together in, uh, in, in their union. And um, Nicolaitans also was uh, a worrisome doctrine kind of where um, the church and the state come together, uh, one has control over the other. And uh, if you want to read more about these doctrines, you can look at Jude 11 or 2 Peter 2.15 that talks about um, the way of the game. Of course, most of us realize that if we look at Numbers 22 and 3 and look at the story of Balaam, we find that Balaam did what was wrong because of the prophet. So if you um, are doing something wrong, like if you're maybe attending a church because it will help your business, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Um, so the heresy that existed with God's people um, is as old as God's people's lives. Ecclesiastes 1 9 says, There is nothing new under the sun. So, heresy that occurred in the scripture is heresy that we need to worry about today. Remember, two people saw. 
you arrive at the wrong destination. I know that uh, very few of you, if any, would ever be a part of a religion um, that a Christian read about where children were offered at the sacrifice to Moloch. You may have built some high places in your life, um, but you may not be only just exalting God, you may be exalting something else. Sometimes Adventists have exalted Ellen White, for what scripture says, and that of course is wrong. Um, some people think that whatever comes out of Roma Linda is correct. And exalting it about what God says. It's not only these early Bible Christians that had a problem with heresy. There are several extremes that we need to avoid today. One thing is a lack of luster interest in spiritual things. Oh, no, no, no. I study my studies for less than I read through once. I study it. About erroneous conclusions on spiritual about a fanatical interest in the spiritual things, fanaticism. Um, in uh, Nichols' book, um, he writes about things that happened to early Adventists, kind of pre Adventist Adventists. And he talks um, about a story which uh, James White. Um, mentioned uh, that we have the Millerites and they have this camping and eating together. And um, there's a lot of fervency in that camping. And uh, James White uh, writes this about two groups that were tented together very closely. Uh, this is Nichols' book, The Midnight Night. Uh, and one tent was a group from Portland, Maine. And then another tent was a group from Waterton. Waterton. And um, so here the Portland brethren moved their tents to a distant part of the, of the campground because of the because of fanaticism in their uh, activities. And James White says that fanaticism, though a disease of the mind and of the spirit, seems to have something in common with certain diseases of the body. It is contagious. Uh, White stated that the very act of the fourth moon brethren in uh, moving their tents away caused the water to be able to raise the cry of persecution and led some unthinking onlookers uh, to join with them in their crime. Well, the problem is James White here is, is describing is um, one group was proclaiming God's victory and uh, they were singing glory to God over victories and uh, but the problem was they were proclaiming God's victories 999 times and it was uh, it's all came to proclaimed by the glory, but there was no evidence of any kind of victory that was gained um, in the, being given by the glory. So, you know, um, people can become very fanatical about certain things in religion that um, is not helpful as well. You know, people could uh, count the, uh, the good parts of Positive, the power of positive treatment. Um, but it too could be uh, dangerous if it's embraced too uh, wholly. Um, years ago, people were either of the camp of Paul or Apollos, they were following one leader uh, or the other, which can be dangerous. Just think about today, there are many Adventists that um, believe every word that that bachelor says or they uh, believe everything that Morris Denden says, or um, Jones and Wagner and Ford and Walter Byth and 
HMS Richards goes on and on looking to a person and what they have said may not be uh, totally in our best interest. Uh, many people, Adventists today, are saying that I, I've read everything that this man has written, or I read, I've got all his tapes, or I um, watch him on YouTube every time he speaks. That can be a danger. People today have misunderstanding in many areas, maybe the role of Ellen White, or what the nature of inspiration is, or what actually happened in 1883. Well, where are the most, where is the most danger to one's faith in theology? Is it um, outside the church or inside the church? I'm saying it's probably inside the church. You want to turn to 2 Peter, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Very much a prosperity doctrine, like 
Joel Olson, uh, Robert Schuller, Norman Vincent Peale. Uh, be careful of reading and believing everything that they say. And if you want to look back at uh, Jeremiah chapter 6, there's a very good counsel there.
Catholic friends ask the Pope what is truth, and he then tells them. But probably the biggest challenge today is from New Age thinking and how it has um, brought heresy into the church. Um, when New Age shaman told a young soldier that if he would wear female clothes, he would be immune from um, guns. So he wore a pink tutu and slippers and took his gun. That doesn't make much sense to me. That kind of message. Um, but that kind, of, that kind of truth is being spread out there. And the New Age supports you know, tolerance, um, radical thinking, um, especially as it lends towards an um, ecumenical um, movement. Um, they would say that Mary had no sin and that she was taken to heaven. And all this is done in an attempt to come out of this Christianity. It doesn't need to be modernized. What is listed in Scripture is what we should believe. And if you look at New Age, it really has meanings towards Eastern religion, Tibetan Buddhism. Inward focus of the thinking and belief in the great potential of the human, unaided by deity, anything that God can do. So just kind of be silent and uh, go deep inside. So I just kind of listed a few areas here that uh, might be of concern and might lead you two degrees off of your proposed target, which is Jesus Christ and salvation. Um, a, we sometimes fear the, uh, the outside influences or the direction from which uh, heresy may come. Uh, we may think it's going to be someone outside the church, but actually it may be someone within the church. Uh, very in the uh, second world war, the French military built uh, spent millions of dollars fortifying the Maginot Line, a series of fortifications, fortifications along the border between France and Germany to withstand an enemy whose tactics they thought they understood. They knew that Hitler marched uh, against France. He, they knew if Hitler marched against he would not, could not, come through the low countries. That he would have to throw his vehicle forces against the massive fortifications of the imaginary land. So the French army prepared for this attack. Miles of barbed wire, tank traps, machine gun emplacements, he protected the eastern side of the line. Mass cannon bristling through its weapons. A complex communication tunnel system made it possible to reinforce whichever part of the imaginal line might come under attack without exposing the truth in this view of the argument. And when fighting and during this question from the beginning, the troops pulled up inside the imaginal fortifications soon found themselves surrounded by the Germans, which had pushed their way to the weakly defended open. Imaginal guns could not be returned to face the direction from which the enemy fired. Same thing can happen if you Christians concentrate only on conspiracy theories and anticipation of a frontal assault on our church. But the church will become, the attack will come from the local. We may think that maybe transcendental meditation will ease our stress. But in fact, it's the sound of us that will be in our streets. A young man thought that he could grow taller if he slept upside down and he was 
after a few days, he found that he wasn't being told. And you don't really tender by sleeping upside down. Growth doesn't happen by trying harder. And you don't grow spiritually by trying harder. Oh, there is divine power at work that outfits us for the life and for godliness. It's the work of the Spirit from the inside out that produces growth. Peter contends that it is through God's glory and goodness that we grow. Is it possible to participate in the divine nature of God and escape the corruption of the world caused by evil desires? God's word assures us that we can escape the corruption of the world. This is good news. We're embracing as the world is. We never hope to preserve this world. There's a man by the name of Jose Gutierrez who wrote a book called The Heat, still working his life and legend. And he spent 42 years working in the steel in the steel industry. And one of his stories in his book is called Snow Dance in the Harvest. And he describes a scene of silver dust that's frequently floated to the floor in an area in the middle where steel strips were uh, sent through a tall cooling tunnel. Workers and visitors flock to this dramatic sight, this sparkling uh, view that they saw. And, uh, Especially picturesque night, all the sparkling in the end. The dust, however, was asbestos. Everyone breathed it. And Jose, who suffers from a slow, choking grip of asbestosis, and many of his colleagues. How many things in our culture resemble those silver fruits um, of that steel man? Very enticing, but deadly. You can miss two degrees off of that deadly. So, what advice would I give you about the many voices that are out there, the, the heresies that are out there or that may be? Number one, um, the information is good as long as we search and decide for ourselves. Look at the information, search it out, and listen for ourselves. It's good so long as we don't follow blindly any human leader. Don't trust anyone to lead you to the result. It's good so long as we don't resort to name calling and labeling those who don't see eye to eye with us. It's good so long as we realize that we need each other. The church means we're all parts of the body dependent on one another. It's good so long as we acknowledge that no one has a lock on all truth. That truth is too big to be accomplished by any humans in the moon. It's good so long as we follow the quest for truth through the Holy Spirit, not through a human agency. It's good so long as we don't turn our teachers into gurus on worship. In the end, we must build our lives on sound teaching. After all, how we live inevitably flows out of what we believe. And what we believe is the result of what we are taught. It's a story on bringing to you in conclusion there. Um, a church in Uganda, a church of 235 members, and they taught that the world was going to end on December 31 of the year 2000. So they all gathered in, gathered the congregation together in the church, locked the doors, and then set the church in the church. Just imagine 235, some of which were children, burned to death in a mass suicide. Why did this catastrophe happen? It was a result of false belief that came from false teaching. They were two degrees off. Am I building my life on sound teaching? 
who will honestly believe that if I follow the teaching of Jesus, I will experience the riches which is abundant life possible? Yes. Who are the false teachers in my life? What are the internet that I do? The songs I listen to, the conversations I have, the books I read. What are these influences teaching me about God in this evening? Am I willing to intentionally shape my mind with the teachings of Jesus? If so, what does that mean for me today? We are taught inevitably shapes what we are taught. Are you headed to the Greeks under this? 